My name is Father Bill Terry. I'm the rector of St. Anna's Episcopal Church, located in New Orleans in the Treme area. Why did you decide to become a priest? It's a very, very long story, and it's a series of dramatic events that are sort of laced together. The, it first started really with uh, going into recovery. Part of recovery is endeavoring to be in touch with a higher power and to realize that you are perhaps not always master of your own destiny. My daughter committed suicide, so that was a pivotal moment. The bottom line is I had to reprioritize what's important in this world and realize that time is very measured and we don't have a lot of it. My wife and I, after two years here, in fact, it was July of 2005, we're sitting in our living room one night. In the news, night after night, reports a murder here, a murder there. In the past week, we've had 10 murders, to give you an idea. My wife turned to me and said, where was that murder? I said, oh, don't worry. It's uh, on the other side of St. Claude. It's, it's not in our neighborhood. Oh, okay. We went back to our business. The very next night at midnight, pop, 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 pop right outside the front door. There was a 17-year-old man shot to death with his girlfriend who was wailing in a voice that sounded like Irish keening. It was an otherworldly wail. The police prevented me from approaching the boy for fear of, quotes, contaminating the scene. I couldn't give the kid last rites. I think that we all have to be responsible for the actions of every citizen uh, in our city. We may not be our brother's keeper, but we certainly hold their lives or should hold their lives uh, as sacred. The Murder Board Project in a neighborhood that often devalues life or where life has little meaning is born out of a faith response that recognizes human beings as human beings and puts profound value on life. Thursday of each week, Deacon Elaine Clements sends to me the list of the murder victims for that week. I pull my little ladder out. I go to the murder board, take my permanent ink markers, and I write their names on the board. When a child is murdered, what we will hear is uh, John Doe and Mary Jane were shot in a drug deal gone bad. And what we hear is drug deal gone bad. We tend to forget their names. We begin to paint a mental image of a gangbanger or somebody really heinous. What the murder board does is sort of take that out of the equation and remind us at the end of the day that these are human beings. In many, many cases, what we see are people who find themselves in a lifestyle or life circumstances that, that are deadly and they get shot, they, they die. Uh, my wife spends uh, the week cutting out every morning we get the newspaper and her job is to read the newspaper uh, to find articles about murder victims. I've been doing the murder uh, scrapbook since the inception. Definitely puts uh, things into perspective when you find a picture to go with the name. Especially when you're talking about um, a person that's 15, 16, 18, 20. Someone who's not had a chance to really live their life. They're, they're, they're just starting out. I can't do it every day because every time I do it, it, it does depress me. It's very hard on me seeing these young people murdered. And um, so I save it up and I do it, try and do it every Saturday morning. Usually Bill and I try and plan to do something fun on Saturday evenings to try and brighten up the day. We will sit on the bank of the river where we won't have song.
We're blessed because this congregation embraces the idea of the murder board. And so they are beginning to be participants in humanizing and holding the sacred life. The murder board is now very much part of the identity of being a parishioner in St. Anna's Church. Yeah.